this week, a Pan-Africanist, Basiru Diomaye was sworn in as Senegal's youngest president. And now he's also the youngest president in Africa. Now, while that was going on, you know, in those state, preparations are ongoing for governorship primaries, both um, on the platform of the APC and the PDP. This is Standpoint. I am Precious Amayo. In just a moment, we'll be speaking with an aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party um, in Ondo State in just a moment. But we'll take a break now. When we return, we'll begin that conversation. Stay with us. All right, thanks uh, for staying with us. Now, a governorship aspirant, as I stated earlier, on the platform of the People's Democratic Party in Ondo State, Adeolu Akinwumi, um, has rejected the adoption of a consensus candidate by some leaders of the party in the state um, ahead of next month's primary election. Now, the aspirant advised the leaders to, of the party to be fair to all aspirants and give all aspirants um, a platform to contest uh, on, the, on the platform of the party you know, and make it a free and fair um, primary. Now, Adeolu Akimwumi joins me in the studio to discuss preparations for the party primaries on the platform of the PDP in Undo State. Good to have you join us. Hello, Precious. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Very well. But let me state that you were the first person to pick your party um, nomination form. Um, uh, and that was, I mean, why, why did you, you, you went straight for it as it was announced? Okay, um, Precious. Um, I think that's to a very large extent, attest to the fact that um, I have been fully determined and prepared to take up this assignment. Um, I've always said, and I have no doubt about it, that leadership is a calling. And um, it takes a lot to aspire for a position such as the exalted office of the office of the governor from the state. Um, I started in the race um, early enough, as early as April 2023, shortly after the presidential elections. and. Um, the National Assembly elections in Ondo State. And um, I have tenaciously pursued this vision. And um, I have, at every point in time, demonstrated the fact that I mean well for the state, the sincerity of purpose in my aspiration. And that is why I tag the aspiration a clear vision and a very trustworthy mission. I know you said you started this race um, in 2023. But in terms of this journey uh, to becoming, or uh, this aspiration for, to become the governor, of Ondo State, when did this actually begin? I have lived with this aspiration almost all my um, at, um, all my life, at least when I came of age, to understand the fact that um, um, I could actually begin to develop my goals in life. Um, I have been in politics for an appreciable period of time. Um, that is um, against the backdrop that I come from a very diverse field. I'm an engineer by training, and um, I practice as a management consultant engineering management consultant, but I've been in politics for an absolute period of time, and I've been in the PDP as a member of this party for an absolute period of time. I know the PDP so well. I know the PDP in and out. I know the tenants of the party. I understand the principles of the party. I can resonate with the ideology of the party. And um, I decided that I'm going to live through this aspiration, and I have consistently been a member of the PDP. So what that means is that I have actually taken time to understand the party, to grow with the party, and this time around, these are the greatest moments of my life, bringing out this aspiration. So it's something I have meticulously developed myself through all my adulthood in terms of competence, in terms of character, in terms of training, in terms of integrity. I have built a personality, a personality deserving of the office of the governor of the state. For some people, people will say, look, um, it is basically just the power of the office that drives them. When you see, when you hear them talk and you hear them, you know, their policies, you, you realize that sometimes it's quite empty and it's just because they want to answer the name governor. Um, for you, what exactly is driving you? My greatest passion as an individual has been serving humanity. And I think that this is the apogee of um, service to humanity. You need to understand that um, as a people, our actions, our goals, our our achievements in life are actually determined by a few set of people, and these are the people we actually elect to govern us. So that underscores the importance of governance. And I believe that I have a role to play 
in our nation building process, particularly my state, Ondo State. And um, I come from a state that is so richly blessed. I come from a state that has abundance of resources. And I think Ondo State has no business with poverty. And I think every child in Ondo State should be well educated. And I think that the things that provide affordable, decent living are things that should be on our palms in Ondo State. We only get to achieve all of these things when we elect the right set of leaders. Yes, people like to be called His Excellency and everything, but I keep saying something. The richest Nigerians are not governors. The most comfortable Nigerians are not governors. So it's not just about the office. There are people that even live larger than the lives of even the so-called governors. So it's not about that one. It's about service to the people. But not everybody has that sincerity of purpose to serve. I do. For a fact, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for anyone. And I think that puts me at the most advantaged position to be the best governor that the state is yet to have. And moreover, we are actually going through very trying times as a country. And everyone feels the heat of what we we're going through as a nation. So it's not a question of um, I have no business in politics. Everybody can be a politician, but the fact is that some people just have to offer themselves for service. Mm. And it, the people you're running against uh, in, in your party to clinch this ticket um, are also not small names. Uh, when you look at, I, I just don't want to mention the names, but you look at the fact that they are not also uh, babies, you know, in politics as well. So I'm asking you what your chances are when you look at the, the, the quality of people you're running against. Okay, thank you. Um, this brings me to... Um, an interesting point. We went for the screening um, of the governorship aspirants um, by our party in Abuja, and the chairman of the of the screening panel asked me this question: "That um, young man, you have demonstrated that you have been a very loyal party member. I don't have any reason to doubt you. But in all these years of your loyalty, assuming you don't clinch the ticket of the party, what's going to happen?" I told him, "Sir, I said I've never doubted for once that I won't win. I'm going to be the candidate of the party by the special grace of God. I don't have a godfather. I only have God on my side, and I have the people on my side. And it's not." It's not about it's not about names. Even these names were given opportunities. Why? That's why I think they have very robust political portfolio. It's not about the name. It's not about the stature. It's about someone who is determined. Someone who has sincere purpose. Someone who is clear about his vision. Someone who understands the performance gaps in governance. I understand my state. I have lived with the people for an unbroken period of over 15 years. I know what the problems are in those states. I know the body language of the people. I know the yearnings of the people. I know when the people are smiling. I know when the people are unhappy because I live with them. I'm one of them. I'm an Indian of the state. So I have no doubt about the fact that we have competent aspirants in the PDP. There's no doubt about that. But one certainly would stand out, and I'm the one that stands out among them. Do you live in the state when, during elections or, or, or you know, off-cycle periods as well? Because we know politicians who say, oh, I have lived in the state, I know the state, but when it's not time for elections, they're either in Lagos or Abuja. I'm fully resident in the state. I live in the state. I live in Akure, precisely, the state capital. And I have lived there for well over 15 years. I just came in from a career, for a fact. So with that understanding, of, with, that, with that experience of living in the state for, you said, a broken period of? 15 years. 15 years. Um, do you understand the greatest need of the people? And what would you say that need is? I think, for me, the greatest challenge is that we don't have an economy in other states. I've always said it. We don't have an economy in other states. Um, it's... Um, an entirely government-driven economy. Um, I think the core business is civil service, and it shouldn't be because we, like I said, we have no business with poverty. Um, there are a lot of things in Ondo State that can actually stimulate the economy. You see, when you have a very viable economy, you have influx of people into the state. When you have influx of people, you have accelerated development. Because when people come in, they need decent houses to live in. Not everybody wants to live in Lagos. People would like to live in a place like Ondo State as long as their source of livelihood is guaranteed. And when you have people come into a state, because a state can be developed solely by even those that live in the state alone, then you have need for accommodation. You need to expand infrastructure. You need to begin to enhance and upscale social welfare. These are the things that bring development. And I keep saying it. Um, there's something that interests me the most, and that is the fact that we can actually use maritime as a gateway, the blue economy, to developing on those states. Um, not too long ago, we were granted the deep sea port license. But I've always said this, that that license will remain as good as it is on that piece of paper where it is, unless there is purposeful effort to put it into good use. On those states, we continue to say, we continue to sing along the line that we have the longest postal line. Yes, we have, but what have we made of it? You need to go to the right line now from the state. You see the economic potentials in the states. But the only reason why that will change is once you have a leader that believes that we must not go cap in hand all the time to Abuja, we must begin to approach governance from the perspective of zero allocation. And nothing is going to come from Abuja, how can we look inwards to develop the state? And before you know it, we'll be there. The, the, the former governor, uh, before his death, was, was largely praised for 
his strides in that state? Are you saying there is no development in this regard at all? I wouldn't say so because I live in the states. You see, um, it's, it's an ongoing concern. Governors are an ongoing concern. I will appreciate what they have done, even if I might have reasons to criticize a few things. But the truth is that he has done his best. Someone else has taken, um, assumed the mantle of leadership of the state. But I also believe that we can do much more better. Um, he, the former governor, um, God bless and rest his whole, came with his own vision. And he has done his own best. Someone else is there. And by 25th of April, someone is going to take over. Um, on any, the platform of any of the parties. But my point is that we all approach governance from different perspectives. For me, my perspective is the fact that we need to create prosperity for our people in other states. And you can only create prosperity when you have an economy that gives everybody that role to develop, that gives everybody that role to make good and decent income. But you won't get that if the approach to governance is the sorts of... Um, Governance being paraded now. You know, governance goes beyond the comedy skit. It's not just about it's not just about that tussle for power. That's not what that's not what governance is all about. Governance is, should be felt by the people. At every point in time, people should feel that 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 they have a government looking after their needs. People should feel safe and secured in their own state. And that is what I look up to. And some people say that, look, some people will say that for all of these, these things you, you're, you're talking about, yeah. that you will require some level of experience because um, governance, it, I mean, that experience helps you understand the intricacies and the administrative requirements of that office. And so I want to ask you what your experience is and what your track records are. I mentioned earlier on that I'm an engineer by training. Um, I graduated from the University of Ibadan where I read electrical and electronics engineering. Um, I graduated some 22 years ago from the of Badon, and um, I hold a Master of Science degree in Computer Systems Engineering, and I'm also certified in Project Management from the United Kingdom. But besides all of this, I've had the opportunity to have worked actively in the organized private sector, and I've also had a very good shot at public service work. I served under the former governor of Ondo State, Dr. Lucia Gmimiko, as special assistant to the governor on administration, and I worked right inside the office of the governor. I understand the rudiments of governance in Ondo State. The, the civil service structure of Ondo State is something that I have had face-to-face -face interface with because I worked with the governor, and I have seen the administrative duties of the governor. I understand the MDAs of the state. That's the ministry, departments, and agencies. I know I I know the I know the geography of Ondo State. I know the structure of governance in Ondo State. And moreover, while serving as um, a special assistant to the governor of Ondo State in the office of the governor, I served in more than 17 state government committees. These are committees started with one responsibility or the other, the implementation of the Bank of Industry Loan Scheme, um, the Marie Tourism Initiative. So I have worked, I have vast experience. But I'll tell you something. It even goes beyond that one. You don't need somebody who has been in public offices before to govern a state very well. There are a lot of sectors in the economy that are driven by young individuals and they are doing so well. Look at the telecom sectors. Go and look at the drivers of the ideas in those sectors. They are young men. Look at the banking sectors. Go and look at those people that infuse ideas. They are young men. So we don't need to go about that point and keep bragging about the fact that I've been a senator, I've been a date. That is not it. Because some of these people have nothing to show, even for this portfolio of achievements, political achievements. So it's not essentially beyond that. While I quite understand the fact that experience is key to governance, but that experience has to be cognate. It should not be about, not everybody will be given the opportunity. Are you telling me now that because maybe you have not been a member of the House of Rep or a commissioner or a special advisor, then you can govern a state? That is not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is the fact that use your background, use your professional background, use your personal development. How do you use it? How do you aggregate it to bring development to the state? How do you aggregate it to drive ideas to the state? That's what we are talking about here. And moreover, we live in a world that is changing rapidly. We need to understand that. Senegal is a, is, a, is, a, is a country just like Nigeria is a country. Today we have a 44-year-old man ruling the country. I pray he lives and he does so well as president of Senegal because he represents my own generation. And this is what I have been clamoring for. And I think by the special grace of God, that is what is going to come the way of the good people of Ondo State come February next year. Mm -hmm. And you sound so convincing and so sure that, you know, you are going to clinch that ticket because you have said that before. And you continue to say that. But what is your popularity level um, within your party um, in Ondo State? I'm the most popular aspirant of the seven of them. I'm the most popular because I have been with the party for a very long period of time. I'm the most popular because I have never defected from the party one day. I'm the most popular because I have been a very keen, ardent supporter of the party. I'm most popular because I have selflessly served the party, even with personal resources. I'm most popular because I have taken every assignment given to me by the party with every sense of seriousness that it deserves. I'm most popular because I'm a young man and I drive the idea that we need to give the upcoming generation that opportunity to come and serve. I'm the most popular because I have lived 
a very decent life with the good people of Ondo State. I'm most popular because I know the state. And again, I'm the most popular because my ideology, the mantra of my campaign resonates so well with the well-meaning supporters of the People's Democratic Party in Ondo State. So there's no doubt about it for a fact. Right, so let's now talk about that People's Democratic Party. Um, there has been controversy about, and you have spoken about it, which is the zoning. Um, at some point, I think it was on the 2nd of March, your party came out and said, uh, partly the leadership, I think that was the spokesperson of the party, uh, is it Perite? Kennedy Perite. Perite. And it, he said, you know, the party has chosen to go the way of zoning. But just a week after that, we had your um, National Working Committee uh, in, in, in Abuja saying, no, it is not going to be zoned. It's been open for all aspirant, um, aspirants and the process is going to be free and fair. But you have also supported the idea of zoning at some point. Um, so where does the party stand and where do you stand? You see, zoning, as it were, is an unwritten arrangement. It's just um, a figment of the permutation of, um, of um, people of the state that, um, one, there must be fair rotation of power, and um, every central district of the state should be adequately represented in the game and balance of power. But besides that, besides that, you need to understand something, that even zoning on its own, it's something that... Um, I want to say, um, has gained a lot of ground in the state because we have seven aspirants now already screened and cleared for the primaries of the PDP. The seven of them are for the Southern Central District of the state. They are in the process of screening that of the APC. But I know for certain that all the aspirants, numbering over 12 in the APC, are all from the Southern Central District of the state. So you understand that it's not like the PDP sat with the APC to say that let us pick the governor from the West God, but it is just something that's Interestingly, has become more or less like a norm, so to say. But as that with the zoning, you talked about the fact that um, the state working committee said something and something a bit different. Mm. You see, um, in the build up to this process, just to ensure that we prepare ourselves adequately for the primaries and eventually the general election, and to also ensure that we have a rank or free process, I really commend the leadership of the PDP. We had several interactions at different strata with stakeholders of the party. And it became almost the most embraced opinion that the governorship ticket of the party should be thrown to the Southern Central District of Ondo State. And I think it was to that effect. Was that at the state level or national level? At the state level, yes. All these all this, all this interactions held at the state level. And to that effect, um, the state public secretary made that statement that you are actually referring to. Um, but the last... The last interface was with the National Working Committee of the party in Abuja. And they felt otherwise that, yes, there's nothing wrong with the southern part of the state is going to produce the words, but it should not be that it has been zoned to a particular zone. And that was why you could see that there was um, another statement emanating. But from, but from what you say, that has been taken care of because, I mean, all of the candidates, all of the aspirants, rather, are actually now from the same... I think naturally from... events have um, gone, gone past that because mm -hmm. um, we already have the aspirants vying for the ticket of the party and the seven of us, we are all from the southern part of the state. Mm -hmm. So uh, more or less, the PDP, the candidate of PDP for a certain is going to emanate from the southern central district of the state. All right, let's talk about the idea also of a, of a consensus candidate which you objected to. Were there indications that there was going to be a consensus candidate and where does that stand now? Um, from certain quarters of the party... Um, with particular reference to certain leaders and elders of the party, they made this proposition that to ensure um, a rank or free selection of the party's candidates, that it seems the best way to adopt a consensus candidate. Um, for me, I looked at it. Uh, PDP is one party, to my own understanding, that has the healthiest internal democratic processes. And that's one of the reasons why I have aligned and remained with the PDP. And the PDP gives you the opportunity to exercise your aspirations freely. Go through open free fair contest, whoever emerges, takes the flag, um, the ticket of the party, and stands the general election. And I said, no, I don't think that is the best way to go. Because it is not something that is good enough to just cut short somebody's aspiration. It takes a lot to aspire. And that's the truth. It takes a lot to aspire. So some people, certain people can't just sit down in the confines of a room and using their own subjective judgment, determine who the ticket of, um, who the, ticket of the party should go to. I said, no. We have a constitution. There are dictates of the constitution. Let us follow the constitution of the party to the letter. It's clearly stated in the constitution of the party. And I made reference to the Edo State um, um, primary election. 
at those states and on those states, we hold our off-cycle elections, I think with about two months interval. Mm -hmm. I said, what is good for the goose is good for the gander. If in those states, I mean, they went through the process of primary election, select Gandhi of party. So what should change about this? Let the best man emerge, I, I emerge through a free fair process. That's, that's crisis that they intend or what the intent of their decision was to avert might even be escalated beyond that. Because when you ask someone to go and sit down and say, this is the person, how do you assuage the person? If you are successful in assuaging the person, what of the supporters of that particular aspirant? So it becomes very tedious, it becomes very messy. And we have done the right thing now. This is the way to go. This is the way it has been in the past. Today we are preparing for primary election. Um, tomorrow, we are go on Monday, we are going to be having um, the Congress, the State Congress, where we are going to be ratifying the delegates that would determine who the party's flag bearer is. And everybody is happy, and the party is alive. Mm. So that was my stand. But, but the, the, the candidate who was going to be, or the aspirant who was going to be the consensus candidate, had that person be identified by those people who called the meeting? Well, precious, I don't work in the minds of the leaders. Mm. So I don't know. Um, I don't know the direction the consensus was heading to. And I was not interested in knowing the direction because I was heading to. All I was interested in is let us follow the condition of the party to the letter. And that is what we are doing. So I don't know and I don't want to, I'm not going to preempt anybody. But I don't think, I don't think, I don't want to believe it was killed in favor of any particular aspirant. I don't know. But for me, I just felt that the, all the leadership of the party needed to do is just to create a level playing ground with fairness and let everybody aspire um, openly and transparently and let the best man um, but if you were right. if you are chosen as the if there is an opportunity and that conversation is had again and they say oh let's pick you as a consensus candidate would you still have the same opinion to say oh let's all go to the field? I don't want to emerge through that consensus of adoption because I also see the dangers in it. I've told you you have about people numbering over five aspiring for a particular position. What will be the criteria to select? Who are those that will sit down there? How do you even determine those that will sit down there? Because it's alien to the concern of the party. Then besides that, when they sit down and they want to select a candidate of the party, you're already subjecting that process again to another form of primary election. Because if you have a split decision, they might throw it into a vote. So that is on its own another primary election. And it does not look tidy enough. That is why I said, let us go through the process. As long as the party ensures that the primary election process is open, transparent, then everybody will be fine with the outcome of the party. Then we can come again together as a party and take on the assignment of winning the general election come November 16, 2024. And I want to quote um, Governor Shea Makede when he said just recently, I think it was after the, the meeting of the National Working Committee, um, when he said that the People's Democratic Party lost the 2020, 2020 Undo state governorship election um, due to disunity and division in the party. Has the party learned its lessons? Because we've seen, even uh, pr prior to now, some of the issues and some of the divisions and divisive rhetorics within the party, you know, for a period of time. Has your party learned its lessons? I want to believe that um, we are in the process of getting it right. Whether we like it or not, the experiences from the 2020 general election can be thrown away because we did not win the election. And obviously, there will always be factors responsible for victory, just as there will be factors responsible for loss in any particular election. We have seen it. We have seen where we did not do so well. We understand the fact. Some of the, even some of the players of 2020 are no longer in the party. We also have people that have joined the party. So the lessons of 2020 will always count as we prepare for 2024. Um, this unity within the party. I can tell you that the party is getting stronger. There will always be differences because we are human beings. We, we are not bound to see things all the time from the same perspective. It is normal. Even the APC, they have their myriads of problems in the states and at the national level. It is understandable it's a political party. But nonetheless, I think the ability to bring ourselves together to define our common goal and work towards that common goal is what is sacrosanct. And that is what we are doing in the PDP as of today. Some would say that, even, look, even at the national level, your party still hasn't recovered from the loss of the 2023 general election. Um, are you running or are you seeking the ticket of a party that can win this election? Uh, some have said some have said that PDP should just, you know, hold off. It's the APC or, or you know, any, maybe another party would emerge, but it is not, definitely not the PDP because you have not been able to put your house in order and they are not sure that you can win this coming election in Ondo State. The 2024 gubernatorial election in Ondo State has got nothing to do with the 2023 general elections because several factors played out in 2023 general elections. For example, the PDP had um, a northern presidential candidate and... Um, the president today who was candidate of the APC was from the southern part of Nigeria, 
particularly the southwest. So these are some of the factors. We had um, our own internal squabbles, the G5 crisis and everything. But some of these things are not even relevant to the election in um, on those states. The truth of it is this. PDP has ruled on those states before. PDP has ruled on those states before. PDP has won several elections in those states before. Senate, House of Rep, House of Assembly. So PDP bouncing back to power is not something new in those states. I will tell you something, and it's just a fact. The PDP is stronger than the APC in those states. I have no doubt about that. The PDP is stronger than the APC in those states. It is just for us to bring ourselves together to consolidate on our strengths as a party and go ahead to win the election. And let me just quickly remind you, there's no big deal about defeating the APC. Governor Shemaki did that you just made mention of. He defeated the APC roundly in Oyo State in 2019, at a time where President Buhari, APC, was president of the country, at a time where the late Governor Jimobi was the governor of the state APC. Shema Gide won 28 out of 33 local governments in Oyo State in 2019. And this time around, he won 31 out of 33 local governments. The same thing happened in Oshun State. In 2019, Governor Adelike defeated the APC in Oshun State, at a time where Arebe Shola was the outgoing governor, Buhari was the president, and he was, um, he was denied that victory. It came around four, four years after again, and the victory was a rebound. In fact, it was even a more resounding victory. So there's no big deal about defeating an incumbent. If you look at the elections held in March next year, the March last year, the governor's elections held across the country, you will see the performance of the, of the people. Look at Kaduna. It was a very, 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 very tightly contested election. Look at that of Ogun State, between Ladi Adebutu and Dakwa Biodun. It was a fiercely contested election. And that of Ondo State even, is even going to be, is going to be serious trouncing because the good people of Ondo State are tired of the APC in Ondo State. And that's the truth. Um, I, I just want to quickly say that uh, when you said he was denied the victory, Again, we we'll go with who INEC, has, uh, INEC announced, and it was Ayutala who was announced the winner of that election. I just want to quickly say that. But I also want to say to you, uh, my last question to you would be, do you expect the process, that's the primary, it's April 25th, yes, do you expect the process to be free and fair? It has always been, and I don't expect anything different. Uh, we had a very credible primary election in July 2020. That was the last primary election. And again, we're repeating the same process again. PDP is known for its held internal democracy, which I have told you. I don't expect anything less, because to know the eventual outcome of the process, you have to look at the build up to the end of the process. It has been going very smoothly. Um, we've had several stakeholder interactions. Um, we've had um, the sale of nomination forms, sale of delegate forms. And all of these things have been going very smoothly. And everything is going to culminate into the primary election of April 25. I don't have any fear about the conduct of that, that particular exercise because we have actually interacted with the National Working Committee. They have given us their words, they have given us, and they have also demonstrated their words that it is going to be a very credible exercise. So I have no doubt about it. Absolutely. Well, we're following the process in Ondo State. Um, I'm sure we'll have you again, uh, depending on your turn, uh, you know, how that uh, primary turn out. If you do win, we'll have you again. If you don't, we'll also have you again when um, I... to, 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 get your, um, to get your thought. Thank you so much for for your time, governorship aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party in Ondo State, Ade Oluakun, Akin Wome, thank you so much. Thank you, Precious. All right, you're watching.